Good afternoon all. Sometimes you see something in a shop and it's just asking to be taken to bits, isn't it? And uh, when I was in Wilkinson's, I saw this. It's a Dettol no-touch hand wash system. And this is just begging to be stripped to pieces, isn't it? So that we can see how it works. Um, at first I thought there might be a, a PIR sensor on there, but then I thought, no, that would be a really bad idea because every time you walk past it, it would just squirt a load of hydrating cucumber splash all over the table. So no, it's probably a brake beam sensor. You probably have to actually put your hand in there and then it'll squirt hydrating cucumber splash. But let's get it open and uh, see what it's like. I should say that this was uh, half price, down from £12 to £6. It's in a very nice box. It's got this UV coating there and some nice uh, silver embossed stuff there but it's obviously not selling i wonder why now you get a refill pack of gunk or soap or antibacterial hand wash hydrating cucumber splash you get a machine the bit we're going to take apart oh is that a motor is that a motorised thingamy? What's all this stuff here? Interesting. Oh, and it says you get batteries, but they must already be fitted in here. Okay, let's turn it on. Is that it? Where's the brake beam sensor? Must be there. Doesn't do anything. Maybe you don't get batteries. I'll have to look in, have a look inside. I wonder if this would make a good electrolyte for uh, supercapacitors. That's a thought, isn't it? Also, what happens if you shake it? Does it all foam up? Yeah, it does a bit. Um, I think I've discovered what's going on here and why it doesn't do anything when I switch it on. And that is because there's a little tab there. So, I'll... Uh, Pull the tab out and uh, put this battery back in. What's this battery then? Generic AA alkaline, no branding. How interesting. Dettol obviously didn't think they could go to the extent of branding up their own batteries. So it is brake beam. There's a beam running down there. I don't know whether there's a light in there perhaps. Break the beam, but that doesn't turn. So there must be just be a pump in there. Hmm. Screws there, so that's how it's going to come apart. Now there's no point putting the uh, hydrating cucumber splash into this thing until I've taken it apart. Oh, that's the battery tab. Um, because otherwise it's going to be full of gunk, and I'm not going to be able to see how it works. So I'm going to take it apart first. Interesting way they've implemented the on off switch so that it just sort of moves this rubber housing thing so that the and they say don't pick this up by the body when you're moving it around because it will just squirt gunk at you um, so that this section here is all completely sealed that's interesting that's making sort of popping noises as though constantly pumping nothing is not doing that pump much good. Hmm. Okay, let's get inside here. Three screws, it looks like, are in this section here, and then everything should just drop out neatly. Hopefully it's been designed in such a way that you don't have trailing wires everywhere which I have to then be concerned about that's not immediately coming out and I can't persuade that to come out all the screws are out it's kind of loose but <clears throat> no I don't know what's keeping that in I might have to get a bit brutal with this thing. 
Now I've noticed some lugs there, so I can... Where's the other one? Yeah, there. So I can lift it up by these lugs. Maybe it is coming out gradually. It's not very keen though. I'm not sure how to lever the rear section out. I could get under that switch, but it doesn't feel too nice. Hmm, not sure. Well, I can see the motor in there and it's all come adrift, so something's not happy. Just wondering whether this bit needs to come off now. But it's not too keen. Ah. Yay! Hmm. I'm wondering whether I'm just yanking on these wires, perhaps. Oh, there's a little sort of uh, pipe coming up here. I suppose that makes sense for the squirty gunge to come out of that hole. And that's, uh, well, what would that be? Receiver or transmitter? That's probably the receiver, the photodiode or phototransistor. And then the emitter will be down here. I think it's in this black housing. That still doesn't want to come out. Am I pulling on those wires? Yes, I think I am pulling on those wires, which is not a brilliant thing. So maybe those wires have to come off. Now there's some gunge that's been put on top of this uh, photodiode and it's all sticky. It's not set, so <laughs> it doesn't smell very cucumbery. So I don't know what that is. Maybe that's just like Vaseline or some sort of sealant just to stop um, moisture getting in onto those connections, although I can't imagine that would be a disaster if that happened. So I'm just wondering if I can lift that diode out, but it is going to be all a bit gungy. Well, this is really annoying. I think I'm actually going to have to unsolder those two wires, but you know, with the soldering iron in all that gunge, so that's going to smell a bit. Oh well, in for a penny, let's get the soldering iron. Yeah, this is not one of those things that's beautifully made and comes apart easily. This is one of those irritating things that absolutely doesn't. Uh, I'll get water in here. That's perhaps a bit too much, but uh, whatever. So we'll let that warm up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to unsolder that. And it's still all gungy. Horrible because everything's come adrift and I am, when I pull this module out, pulling on those wires and that's not a good thing. And of course until I get this out I can't see whether there's any connectors on there or anything nice, nice like that. I doubt it. It looks like you have to feed those wires up through that hole and then solder it on once all this is in place. Ah, that's pretty horrible. Right, I think we're hot, so let's just dab a bit of solder on the iron. And now, with the aid of a screwdriver, see if I can lift these wires off. Green nearest to the pipe. That one's come off. Red furthest away from the pipe. And that one has also come off. Super. I'm not quite sure how they wrapped these around this plastic lug. I'm just going to have to pull them out. Also, of course, I'm now starting to think what's going to happen with this pipe? How is it joined onto the pump mechanism in the module at the bottom? Because that pipe is going to come apart somewhere. Right, those are free. So now what happens? Aha! Uh -huh. So what happened with that pipe? That must just push up inside that bit of pipe. Interesting. Oh, there's a squirt board. There's actually a chip on there. Oh, there must be some sort of timer chip for the timing of the squirtiness. Oh, look. Lots of this um, gunge. This is obviously being used as a lubricant 
for the gears and the motor that's all at a funny angle that's probably because it all got a bit bent no maybe it sits at a funny angle what's that axle in there oh that um, goes down into the main gear there and that gear must operate it looks like there's a, a piston you can see a little red ring that must move in and out well, let's get some batteries in it oh now that that uh, micro switch detects one full revolution would be my guess although what pushes against that oh can't see what's happening in there well i think i have to power this up and see what happens now of course i can't really break the beam now because i don't have a sensor i wonder if it would be happy if i just shorted these i'm gonna have to just short them aren't i no that doesn't do anything and maybe it's not on let's try that no shorting them doesn't work what's that switch do then that doesn't do anything either what's going on oh yeah i did disturb something that is obviously supposed to be seated in there oh now the big gear has come off mm. where does that go That must go in there. Gunji. But now why can't I get this motor to fire when I short these together? Surely a photo diode or transistor will just go low resistance. And so shorting that should do the trick. But it doesn't. Maybe this chip's super clever and actually needs to see the diode. That's annoying. Of course, the other thing that's just occurred to me is that that is probably the emitter. This is probably the uh, infrared emitter at the top there. And that's the detector, the brake beam detector. So what I really need is an infrared light source. Mm, where can I get one of those? Well, I just found this remote control. This should shove out infrared. And it's going to be coded, but it should still do it. Let's see if I can force it to trigger by firing some infrared at it and breaking the beam no it doesn't seem very happy to do that that chip must be ever so clever that it won't tolerate infrared from this remote control any batteries in there yeah hmm that hasn't worked now there are some markings here on the board uh, tx plus and tx minus are indeed the orange and green wires the wires that go to the uh, the led we now know that is uh, rx plus and rx minus oh i can't see what color those are oh yeah purple and gray and they go down to the uh, receiving sensor i suppose i could just try shorting them if i can do that no it's clever enough not to accept those being shorted so uh yeah this is tricky i mean am i going to have to go to the lengths of digging that thing out and sticking it on these wires and trying to point it towards this that's a nuisance this is really annoying um i discovered that it was switched off it's now <laughs> switched on and in fact shorting the receiver does work come on or did i press that no, I'm sure I shorted the receiver and the motor did fire up now it isn't why not right on short the receiver right now it runs but this shoots up and if I push that down this moves out because <laughs> because its axle is actually up inside this bit there's the axle for this gear so there's nothing holding this in place so there's absolutely no way you can watch this thing work what a load of old rubbish so i'm gonna to have to hold this in place 
with a cocktail stick working as an axle, short the sensor, that shoots up, oh, ah, yes, now that kind of works. Seems to do two goes at it. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, it's difficult to hold that in place to actually watch the thing. And of course, I didn't see that red plunger thing. And now it doesn't seem to tolerate being having its sensor shorted. Oh, yeah, it does. I, oh, infuriating thing. And all the while, I'm getting covered in this horrible gunge and so is my cutting mat so i think really all i can do is really i can't believe that this thing can't be tested when it's not fitted into the this housing here that doesn't come out does it no that's that's just all one molding that's ridiculous that you can't test this stand alone without this top being on it and then once this is on you can't see what's going on i'm gonna have to put it back on because it's the only way I'm going to see if it works. I mean, we can see how it works. Worm gear, intermediate gear. This thing has a cam on it. If I take that off. That won't come out now. It has a cam on it there. So as it rotates, it pushes this slide in and out. That's got quite a lot of pressure on it. Now you can see the piston moving in the cylinder, which is what pumps hydrating cucumber splash out of the nozzle but you can't do it but it's sat in such a way that you can see what's happening what a irritating machine i'm beginning to have buyer's remorse now serious buyer's remorse right this is going back in the housing because i've had enough of it <laughs> i'm going to solder the wires back onto the oh if i can remember which way around there um, I might have to watch the video back to, uh, I think it was it green nearest to the pipe, I can't remember. Uh, solder them back on, maybe it'll be obvious when I get it back in, and, uh, and then see if it works. Rah! Well the difficulty now is threading these wires up through this hole to get them to come out of the top. So I'm having to sort of, um, flatten these off or straighten them out as much as I can. Of course now I've lost any positioning, any sort of memory in the wire as to where the connections go. But yeah, that needs to go down in there so that they come out the top. Ah, I think that's got it. I think that may be it. Now I'm going to just press this home. Well, maybe that's it. Perhaps I'll put the screws in now and uh, try and wire these back on. Well, I have to say, this really hasn't been a very enjoyable experience at all. My cutting mat's absolutely covered in that gunge. Where's the other screw? I'm having to use my magnetic screwdriver to put the screw in the hole and then and then hand over to the smaller screwdriver to tighten it up because uh, my magnetic screwdriver is too big. Right, that's tight. Now I hope that the pipe um, has gone up inside there. I'm going to have to watch the video back now to see which way around these are. I suppose it wouldn't really matter if I got it wrong. It just wouldn't work, would it? Oh, what a nuisance. Right, I can see from one of my previous shots that it's green nearest the pipe. Now I've got to try and get these things wrapped around that peg. Oh, oh maybe that just comes out. It appears to just come out, so that's going to make it easier to wind these around that peg. Now I've got to try and 
reposition that. Yeah, that looks good. And then green goes on this near one. So let's solder that. What a faff. Handle covered in gunge. I'm not sure I can really be bothered to make a good job of soldering this. That's a bad job of soldering it. You get in there. Oh, it's getting hot. Ouch, that was getting hot. Right, this one just doesn't seem to be long enough now. That'll do. It doesn't seem to be seated properly. So I'll press these down. I think they've jumped out of... And I'm not sure whether that diode's... Oops, I'm going to short it. Not sure whether it's pointing in the right direction now, but we'll soon find out, I guess. Horrible, sticky mess, this thing. And that's even before I put the cucumber hydrating splash gunk into it. Right, let's see if it works. Now, where's on? Perhaps that's off. Oh. oh, that seems to work. Yeah. <laughs> Something's going... Something's going slightly clunk inside there now, as if something's not quite sitting as it should, but I've had enough, so that's good enough. Let's put that on there. Turn it off. Put the uh, cover on, which goes like that, and dump some hydrating cucumber splash in it and see what happens. I need to wash my hands anyway. Right, peel this label off, and then I presume you have it with the label pointing in. Turn it on. Right, let's give it a try. The motor seems to be labouring. That's good. Oh, here it comes. Cucumber hydrating splash on my hand. It works. Better go and wash my hands. Well, what an annoying thing. The fit of that into the machine doesn't seem terribly convincing either. Messy mat because of all that sort of grease and the stuff they dumped on top of the little emitter there. Okay, let's switch it on again and maybe I'll uh, wash my hands again. Hydrating cucumber splash. Yummy! I suppose actually it's not too bad because I've not got any drips of the uh, of the soap on my mat at all, so I suppose that's uh, a positive. Anyway, I'm going to wash my hands again. There's a very interesting plume of bubbles coming up from the um, the point at which the bottle sits on the base. Looks almost like an atom bomb. So I'm not quite sure why that's pluming up there like that. But um, still no drips, so I suppose that's quite impressive. Right, that's going to sit there uh, on the basin. The wife's going to say, what the hell is that thing? And I'll show her how it works, and you never know, she might be impressed. I'm not impressed. I think it's a horrible thing. And when that refill cartridge of soap runs out, I think I'm going to just chuck the whole thing away, because I'm sick of it. Anyway, that's the teardown. Cheerio!